Welcome to this tutorial where we will learn to uncover hidden dependencies using something called an X-ray analysis. And this session is going to be a little bit more of a technical deep dive, so we will look at a little bit more technical details and we will see how the information we get out of our X-ray analysis can help us make better software designs. I would like to start by talking about something called accidental complexity. And with accidental complexity, I'm simply referring to parts of our solution, parts of our code, that are more complex than what the problem calls for. And I've found that accidental complexity comes in two different shapes. The first and most obvious shape is when we have complex parts. So that might be that gigantic hotspot or that extremely complex module that no one really can manage. And this is usually quite easy to detect using CodeSense hotspot analysis. But the second type of accidental complexity is a little bit harder. So this is the case where each one of those parts, each one of those modules is simple and easy enough to understand in isolation, but where the emerging system behavior is anything but simple. We have complex interdependencies. Now, using traditional static code analysis tools, we can uncover the interdependencies in our code base as seen from the code. And that's the key here and also the key limitation because the dependencies you see in the code might not be the most interesting dependencies. In fact, I have found and I hope to show you in this video that there's a lot of really interesting information that we cannot see in the code alone. It's information that we can only uncover by looking at the behavior of the developers. The most powerful way I know of uncovering developer behavior is a technique called change coupling. Now, change coupling is a bit different from the way we typically talk about coupling. When we talk about coupling as programmers or developers, we typically refer to dependency. But change coupling is different because change coupling is invisible in the code itself. It's something we can only uncover from the evolution of the code. So here's a simple example on how it works. Let's say we're free different modules here. And the first time we make a change, the first time we commit something, we change the log login and the agnostics module together. The second time we modify something else. And the third time we're back to modifying the login module and the diagnostics module together as part of the same change set. Now, if this is a relationship that continues, we know that there has to be some kind of logical dependency between the login module and the agnostics module because they keep changing together over time. This is something we can use to uncover how well our design holds up. Change coupling is interesting on multiple abstraction levels and CodeSyn supports all those levels. So we can go all the way from low level function and method methods that change together to a file level and all the way to the system architectural level. And just to give you an idea on how that looks, here's an example on a cluster of microservices that tend to change together. So, this is something you can use to reason about the cost of change on an architectural level. However, that's a concept I'm going to talk about in a different tutorial. So I just wanted to leave this as a teaser here, right? Because today we're going to focus on one of the hidden gems of CodeSyn. So we're going to see change coupling in a bunch of different code bases and a couple of different use cases. But I would like to start by having a look at TensorFlow. TensorFlow is a well-known machine learning framework and it's a pretty big code base and what we see here is only the most significant change coupling. Let's start by understanding the visualization. So the change coupling is laid out in a graph like this and each one of the nodes here represents a particular file and the links that traverse between the different nodes represents change coupling. So that means here for example we have a cluster of four different files that tend to be changed as parts of the same commits. So you modify one of them and you have a predictable change in three others. Now, this visualization is also hierarchical in the sense that stuff that's located closely together in the source code appears close to each other in the graph as well. And you can see in the table to your right, you can see the actual numbers behind the change coupling. So here, for example, we have something called skip dataset and take dataset, two different modules change together in 100% of commits. So you modify one of them, you always need to modify the other one as well. And we see that this has happened in 12 different commits. 
Cool. So what I want to point out is that you don't see all the change coupling at once, because that would be overwhelming. So CodeSync filters it out. And you have this slider that you can slide around, and if you want to watch a little bit more change coupling, you see there's a massive amount of it in TensorFlow. So let's get back to a higher level that CodeSync suggested as a default. Let's say, let's look at everything that changes together in at least 80% of all cases. Now, one thing I find here that's interesting is that we have this cluster of files here that change together. And in particular, if we look at the two at the top, there's one called tprof show multi, and one is called tprof show. So these sound like they are part of the same concept. So these are just different abstractions for different scenarios. What I want to do now is that I want to use change coupling to evaluate how well that abstraction actually holds up. And the way to do this would be really, really painful without tooling support. Trust me, I've been there. So what you have to do is basically you have to pick up not only the current revisions of those source code files, but also all their historic revisions. And then you have to look at the evolution and see why do these files tend to change together. And each one of them might be messy. They may be thousands of lines of code. But with tooling, this is so much simpler. So look carefully now, and I'm going to show you one of the best kept secrets of CodeSync. Once you find an interesting change coupling relationship like this one, all you have to do is you click on one of the nodes, and then you can x-ray the whole change coupling cluster. So let's do that, and let's see what we find inside. Now, the x-ray analysis will take all those files involved in the change coupling cluster and it will parse them and look at why do this happens. And the result is visualized in this graph. And what you see here is basically that each slice in that graph represents a particular function in a distinct module. And if you hover over one of them, you can see its dependence in other modules. So in this case, we see that we have something called tprof code, a C++ file, and it has a show internal method. And when we change that one, we have a predict and modification in one, two, three other functions. Cool. If you have a large amount of change coupling like this, you see there's a massive amount of change coupling, a typical switch over and look at the actual numbers instead. So let's go to external temporal coupling details. Now, the way to read this graph is that it always shows pairs of coupled functions. So here we have functions in two different files. Both of them are test files. And we see the actual unit tests inside them. And we see that these change together in approximately 40% of all changes. And a very common reason for change coupling on a function level is a dear old friend, copy-paste. So CodeSync comes with a built-in copy-paste detector. And the result of that is viewed here in the final column that's called similarity. And we see that this first pair has a similarity of 100%. Just to get an idea of how that looks, let's click the compare button here. And we see that the code is absolutely identical. The only difference is in the name of that particular function. So this might be a good idea to refactor in the short run. But it might be even more interesting to look at some of the other findings. So here, for example, here are the two modules I referred to initially, tprof show and tprof show multi. So with change coupling, you can see how well that abstraction has held up over time, how well that abstraction actually supports the changes we do to the code. And in this case, we see that if we modify one of those show methods, we need to modify the other one in approximately two thirds of all changes we do. And again, we see a possible explanation for that dependency in the column to the right that says similarity. So let's click on that one. And we see that this is virtually the same algorithm. The only difference is that in one case we use a show multi-node and the other case we use a show node. And this is actually the kind of code application that's pretty good to find because it represents a low-hanging fruit. It's very easy to refactor away this. I mean this uh, it's C++ right so we can basically create a template and parameterize it with the kind of type we want to operate on and our code application will go away and our change coupling will disappear between those methods and our design will be a little bit easier to work with in the process.
But CodeSyn's support for change copying goes much deeper than that. With CodeSyn, you can uncover implicit dependencies across Git repository boundaries. And to show this powerful feature, I would like us to have a look at the microservice system. Well, at least a service-oriented system. This one is Spinnaker, which is a continuous integration platform for the cloud. Now, let's click on the system map here so that we can see how a microservice system looks in CodeSyn. Basically, each one of those top-level building blocks that you see here represents a distinct service inside Spinnaker. Now, if we look at the temporal coupling view of Spinnaker, it will look pretty much like the other case studies we had to look at. However, if you look at the menu, you see that you have the choice of looking at change coupling between repositories. So in this particular view, we get to see all the interdependencies over time between files and content in different repositories. And it's exactly the same kind of visualization style as we looked at before, but only now it's limited to those dependencies across repository boundaries. And we can see that in the table to the right, because the first element here of the path, of the file name path, it's a virtual path that always refers to the name of the repository, which in this case represents a different service inside Spinnaker. So here we see a dependency between the Orca service and the Rosco service. And what's fascinating with this is that we can even detect dependencies between code implemented in different languages. So here, for example, we have a JavaScript file in the front end that changes together with two Ruby files on the back end. Now, how is this even possible to detect? Well, I'm going to show you in 10 seconds, but before I go there, I only want to point out that with CodeSyn, you have full X-ray support, even for files that are located in different Git repositories. So here, if we have a cluster like this, and we want to find out why we have this change pattern from the UI to the back end, we can just click on it and launch an X-ray analysis. And now it's time to reveal the magic behind this feature. How is it possible to track change patterns across multiple Git repositories? Well, the concept we use is rather simple from a conceptual perspective, but it was incredibly hard to implement. I think, I think this is one of the toughest features ever implementing codes in. But what we do here, is basically that we rely on the fact that most organizations tend to include a reference to the task in each commit message. And if you don't have this information, you can start including it now and build up the data you need to track changes across repositories. Because what CodeSyn does is that it parses out that task reference and then it groups multiple distinct commits together into logical change sets. And then the change coupling is calculated on a logical change set level. And then it doesn't matter if the commits are in multiple repositories or not. And in order to enable this, you need to tell CodeSyn about your ticket ID. CodeSyn will make a qualified guess, so it's a good chance it will work out of the box. If not, you can specify a ticket ID in the configuration. Now, if you don't have ticket IDs in your commit messages, I strongly recommend that you start including them because that kind of tracing towards requirements and features is useful anyway. But if you want to start with change coupling anyway, what you can do is that you can choose a different strategy. Because CodeSyn also supports a heuristic, we would say if it's the same offer and within a reasonable time frame, well, then those different commits might be part of the same change set if it happens over and over again. So far, we looked at change coupling between different files, but you might also have change coupling between functions inside the same unit. And this is a useful concept to uncover. Let me show you how by taking a look at the Python codebase. Now, this is the C Python implementation, so the reference implementation of the Python programming language. And it's an old and mature codebase. It has a history that goes more than 25 years back. So there's a lot of data to look at here. So let's start by narrowing it down. Let's click refactoring targets here to have codes in prioritize the potential cost savings and maintenance savings we can do. And we see there are a few hotspots here worth of deeper investigation. One of them is the Unicode object, or C file. 
When we look at that one, we see that its biomarker indicates that there might be some severe maintenance issues here. And we also see that this is a big, big file. Oh no, 12,000 lines of code. Well, what can we do with that? The first thing I try to do when I come across big hotspots like that is to reduce the amount of code. Because there's usually a lot of code that you can get rid of and simplify the overall algorithm inside that file so that you can do more advanced refactorings. And the X-ray analysis, and in particular change coupling, helps us with that. Let's see how by launching on X-ray. The first thing we see here is the prioritized technical depth on a function level, and that's something we looked in in one of the other video tutorials. Right now, I want to switch to a different tab, this one called internal temporal coupling. So this shows the coupling in time between the different functions inside that module. So we see, for example, that Unicode find and Unicode R find, two different functions, changed together in 100% of the cases, and they have done that in 35 different commits. So this is not just a fluke, it's something that happens over and over again. And we do note that the code similarity is at a very high level. And we've noticed that high code similarity for the top change couples here. So let's look at one of them and see if we can come up with a way of paying off some technical depth and reducing the total amount of code. Let's click compare here. Ah, and what we see is kind of interesting. First of all, I want to point out that these two implementations, it's exactly the same algorithm. And it's a non-trivial algorithm. So this means we want to have a single source of representation of this knowledge. And in this case, if you notice the differences that are highlighted in yellow here, we see the only difference is on the left-hand side, we call an R-split function. And on the right-hand side, we just call a plain split function to get rid of white spaces here. Now, what I would do in this case is that I would take this code and I would extract a single abstraction that both of these different contexts can reuse. And I would parameterize it with the small behavior that varies, R split versus split. And since this is C code, I would do that using function pointers, a much underused abstraction in my humble opinion. Mm -hmm.